My name's Jane, I'm 20, and I met Connor Murphy in April 2021. Connor Murphy is a former bodybuilding YouTuber who is currently suffering from drug-induced psychosis. He was taking one of the strongest psychedelic drugs in the world called ayahuasca every two hours. As of the day that I'm making this video, May 14th, Connor is safe and in an institution according to his sister. I'm disabling likes and dislikes for this video because no matter what anyone believes, I'm not doing this for clout. This isn't a situation you can like. Connor has posted his bank routing number, his social security number, all of his passwords, among other information, which I will talk about later. But I'm asking that you do not take advantage of him in this vulnerable state. He does not understand what he is doing. I felt compelled to make this video because the system for getting people like Connor help clearly failed and majorly. Less importantly, I unintentionally became involved in Connor's situation and I feel the need to clarify why I was featured in some of his social media posts as well as give insight to the people who are messaging me regarding his well-being. I'll be keeping the comments on so that people can give advice to the next people that try to help him and start a conversation on mental health system reform regarding social media usage. I recorded almost everything that I experienced with Connor in the hopes that we could get him involuntarily committed to a mental health facility, but I'm going to be using as little footage of Connor as possible because I do not want to add any further pain to Connor. Connor or his family. People have already tried to pick apart my story in every which way, so I have to show as much proof as possible without trying to promote or exploit what happened. I hope that this video shows what it's like to actually be with him so anyone who tries to help him in the future isn't accused of not doing enough. Connor and I were introduced by a mutual friend named Andrew. Andrew invited me to go film a YouTube video for Connor Murphy's channel on April 16th. This was the first time I had ever heard of Connor, so while we were driving to Top Golf, I looked up Connor on YouTube and saw that he had 2.5 5 million subscribers. I'm like, wow, that's really cool. And then Andrew explained that Connor used to make bodybuilding and like prank type of videos, but recently his content had shifted into spiritual enlightenment type videos. At this point in time, Connor had privated all of his old bodybuilding videos and I had not yet seen his spiritual enlightenment videos either. But Andrew had said that this would be a picking up girls at Top Golf video, so it sounded like he was going back to his old type of content. We get to Top Golf and Connor was dressed like a king and had decorated his Top Golf station. I just thought it was a creative idea and also he was acting normal. I saw no major red flags when I hung out with him in April. He was lucid, he was funny, and he had not yet hit the state that he is currently in. He did tell me that he does ayahuasca, but I had no idea what that even was. At Top Golf was the first time I had ever heard of it. I'm a sober person. I do not do drugs or drink. I googled what ayahuasca was while at Top Golf, found out that it was a psychedelic drug, and I thought that he was just a hippie. Like, people who do shrooms or whatever. So on April 16th, we filmed for maybe an hour and a half. Connor gave me his phone number and Andrew and I left. Connor uploaded the picking up girls at Topgolf video on April 21st, but it was titled something completely different. And at Topgolf, Connor did a skit with me where he was like teaching me how to swing, you know, like, let me adjust your hips. And this is how he edited the skit he did with me. <laughs> So after Connor sent me the link to the video, I looked further into the type of content he was making on his YouTube channel. Like I said, he had privated all of his old bodybuilding videos, so I had never seen what he was like before. I had no frame of reference. Keep in mind, the videos he had made up until when we met in April were still somewhat lucid. The Topgolf video was the very first video of his that was just total nonsense. It was weird to me, but I brushed it off and then Connor texted me again on May 3rd. Connor asked me to come over because he was decorating his apartment into a mystical golf Wonderland. I was comfortable with going over there alone because I had met him before with Andrew, but I had no intentions to have sex with him or anything like that. People are probably going to ask why I went over to his apartment after seeing that video, but I was obviously not aware that he had entered psychosis since I'd last seen him. May 4th was the second time I met Connor. I drove my car to Connor's apartment complex. There were a bunch of boxes and trash bags in front of his door. We went inside his apartment and this is what I saw. The stack of boxes was so huge that it took up half of the apartment and spilled out through the front door. Connor apologized for it being so messy, but said that he hadn't had time to clean because he'd been so busy making content. I've just been so focused on getting up all this content. I just haven't had time to clean. That's why I'm here. See, the thing about Connor is that he's very calm in real life, but he puts on a more manic persona for social media, which I'll talk about later. My immediate impression was also that he was sober. He was aware of things, like he had said, I'd have to move my car because I had accidentally parked in a residential spot and I needed to move it to the guest lot. So I just started unboxing the mountain of packages and it was a bunch of totally random stuff. Just a few of the things were a Harry Potter invisibility cloak, 12 cans of oxygen, and a cat tower. 
I asked him if he had a cat and he said no. He had a Porsche bike in the middle of the room and I figured that he must be getting a lot of AdSense because he had 2.5 million subscribers. He also filmed a video of me dancing while I was cleaning and posted it to his Instagram. Some people thought I was a stripper or whatever. I was just dressed in a crop top and you can see I'm holding a pair of scissors because I was unboxing stuff. I think the first major red flag is when I begin to notice a really bad smell. While I was cleaning, I found that there was rotten food everywhere on the counter, on the floor, but it's important to note that I did not yet go into the kitchen area. There's a difference between leaving leftover food containers lying around and having uneaten, rotten food everywhere. I also realized that Connor wasn't actually helping me clean or unbox, he's just wandering around talking about stuff that's kind of hard to follow. I don't know anything about spiritual enlightenment, so I thought maybe it was just going over my head. At some point, Connor showed me the H3H3 video that was made about his bodybuilding content, and he told me that his old videos were super cringe. I told him I would like to see more of it, so maybe he should unprivate his old videos. He said, yes, I'm going to do that. I'm going to unprivate my old videos. I spent a few hours unboxing stuff, flattening the boxes, and then I asked Connor for some water. Connor said that he doesn't have any water at his apartment, but we could go to a grocery store and get some. We went outside to his Porsche. There was a bunch of random stuff in it, and it smelled really bad. I did offer to take my car, but I had parked in the guest lot far away, and Connor's like, no, my car's right here. Later, I found out that he was under the influence of ayahuasca, and I would not have let him drive if I had known that. Also, when we started driving, he was not swerving or making any illegal turns or anything like that. So my alarm bells also went off when he said, actually, instead of the grocery store, let's go to the park and film. We drove to the park and he had me film him the whole time. And again, he was just saying completely random stuff. When it started to get dark, I asked Connor if we could go get some water and he said yes, but then he started to lead me in the exact opposite direction of the car. I was starting to get a little scared, but I figured if I kept filming him with the flash on, the people who were still at the park would see us. And also, I've been with this guy all day and he's never once made me feel uncomfortable, only confused from all the stuff he's been saying. He's also my ride. If he leaves, I'm alone in the dark at the park. I asked him where we were going. He said he wanted to show me a hiking trail. I filmed him the whole time we were walking the trail and eventually we made it back to the Porsche. He started driving us to Walgreens and he had me film him during the whole drive. And when we got to Walgreens, he had me film him while we went inside too. And that's one of the videos that he posted onto one of his channels. We get back to the car and he's like, did you get your water? And I was like, no, I was filming you. He says, okay, let's go to H-E-B. But we end up sitting in his car for about 30 minutes because Connor wants to film stuff. While we were sitting there, he asked me to film two more videos that he ended up posting, but I only want to bring attention to one of these videos, which is called I'm Getting Married. Here's a short clip from that video. So, you know, me and Jane, we're actually saving our first kiss for marriage. <laughs> So we're not yes. gonna kiss until we're on the altar. I also want to address the comments on this video and I will do that later, but a few people said that my pupils were big and that I was high. So I just want to reiterate that I am a sober person and I was sober in this video. They also said that Connor's pupils were big, which should have been a tip off to me that he was high. But since my pupils were dilated, I guess I attributed it to the low lighting. I'm not trying to make excuses, just Please understand that I had no experience with anything like this before, and I was still trying to process what was happening. We drove to HEB to get me water, which Connor paid for, but he also ended up buying a bunch of random stuff like essential oils, a ginger, a single dragon fruit, and the total ended up being over $200. Once we got back to his apartment, I realized that if I don't put these groceries in the fridge, he's not going to. And that is when I went into the kitchen for the first time. There was ayahuasca all over the counter. I asked Connor, how often do you do ayahuasca? And he said, every two hours. I did not know that Connor was high until then because he mixed the ayahuasca with like health juices. And so I only saw him drinking those. This was when the magnitude of the situation began to hit me. And I realized that he had been saying all of this weird stuff because he was high. I just started filming everything in the hopes that I could show it to the authorities and get him some help. Here's me putting away the groceries and you can see the ayahuasca in the scale on the counter on the left side of the screen. There are pressure points in your, oh, thank you. Uh, there are pressure points in your hand, so when you push down into your hand right here, mm -hmm. and you really concentrate, you can start feeling a little bit more chi energy coursing through you. But I did not feel that Connor was violent. I actually wanted to help him, so I continued to clean for another few hours. At some point, I unboxed a Lord of the Rings ring. I said, oh my god, I love the Lord of the Rings, and Connor told me I could have it. Since he had made the joke about us getting married earlier, I said, are you proposing to me? And he said, yeah, and I thought it was a joke. That's when I recorded the video he later posted to his Instagram after I left. 
Connor just proposed to me with the Lord of the Rings ring. <laughs> Also, while I was unboxing packages that night, I opened up four more bags of ayahuasca he'd ordered. Then it's like midnight, I'm exhausted, I've been cleaning all day, I've been trying to keep up with everything that he's talking about, and so I tell Connor I'm leaving, but I'm gonna come back the next day to clean more. I drove home, I went to bed, I woke up May 5th, and I had a lot of notifications. Connor had posted the video, and now people thought that we were engaged. Then Andrew, remember the friend who introduced us, starts texting me and says, Connor just posted his bank routing number and all of his passwords. He also posted his social security number. I call Andrew, and I find out that after I told Andrew that Connor was doing ayahuasca every two hours, Andrew had gone over to Connor's apartment after I'd left. Andrew told me that he'd had a long conversation with Connor and had tried to get him to go sober and take a break from the internet. I can't believe I wake up after this long conversation with him and he just goes and does everything opposite of what he said he was doing. Like I've never seen his apartment like that. Normally it's like super organized and like clean. Andrew also said that Connor's dad had called. Dad is like on the phone last night and he's concerned but it's like no one's fucking doing it. I tell Andrew that I'm gonna go back over to the apartment and check on Connor. I asked Andrew if he could come with me, but he had to work 11 a.m. to 8 p.m. If I didn't have work today, I would pull up. I think we have to do something today. She's doing ayahuasca every two hours. Every two hours, dude. Yeah, I feel like the more people that talk to him, it just throws him deeper into this psychosis that he's in, you know? Remember when we came to Top Golf? Like, like he was super nice. Like, he was kind of, it's kind of goosey. He's escalated. So I guess I'm gonna go over at one. Do you think he's gonna hurt me if I go over by myself, but I don't no, wanna- No, no, he's not, he's not an aggressive person. That's what I'm thinking. Cause like, people are like, like don't no, go like, over there. Like, he's like the least aggressive person I know at all. I know, he was, he was really nice to me. I spent the day with him yesterday. Dude, he lost another thousand followers this morning. Or I'm gonna ask the officers when they come and get him if I can have his phone. He's convinced that he's just more focused than normal. And now everyone thinks that I'm his girlfriend and they're like blaming me and they're like saying, I need to do shit and I'm like I just met him when he started the pre-masada yoga he was uploading it at least like a decent video he was uploading like a couple, once every couple of days they were getting a decent amount of views now it's just it's gone from that to just spam and ridiculous shit and I'm like you should unprivate your old videos and stuff so when I type in Connor Murphy on Google it literally comes up first result is Connor Murphy married <laughs> I know. I think I have to do something. All right, I guess I'll go over to his house. You know where he lives, so. I texted Connor, asked if I could come over at 1 p.m., but then Connor posts that someone had drained his bank account. He had $9,000 in there, and it was gone. He pretty much lost, like, nine grand in, like, just one day from all these, like, people stealing his money. When I was with him yesterday, he was spending money like crazy. He spent a bunch on groceries. Are you working till 8 p.m.? Yeah, I work till 8, but I'm gonna try to get off early. I hung up with Andrew and asked Connor if I could go over sooner he said yes and i quickly drove to his apartment and there were even more packages on the front porch there are more packages since i was here yesterday what did you order i don't remember connor was still very calm i asked him if he had slept and he said that he'd gotten a 30 minute power nap i told him he should delete his passwords and his bank information and he started telling me about how he's god and he needs to give to his followers andrew and i agreed to wait to call the cops to see if i could get a hold of connor's phone in order to call his parents connor goes upstairs to edit so i go and get footage of the ayahuasca in the kitchen in his cabinet i found like pounds and pounds of bags of ayahuasca i go and sit with connor upstairs as he edits new content then the police call connor's phone i'm sitting there with him and i filmed it but i can't post it because under texas law at least one party on the phone call has to consent to the recording i'm gonna call this guy officer number one connor picks up Officer number one is like, this is the police department. Is this Connor Murphy? Connor says, yes. Officer number one says, we got a call about your well-being. Are you okay? And Connor's like, yeah, I'm fine. I'm a social media guy, so I do some interesting stuff. Officer number one says, oh, okay, but you're not gonna hurt yourself or anybody else. And Connor said, no. Then officer number one hung up. The call was less than a minute. I'm texting Andrew, keeping him up with all of this, and then Connor's dad calls. I don't want to disclose what his dad said, but after he hung up, Connor told me, I am privated all of my old videos. He showed me it was true, and Andrew's like, 
I've been trying to get him to do that for months. So at this point, it's clear that Connor has developed some sort of trust with me. It's been less than 24 hours since I visited his apartment for the first time. Based off of what I'd seen, I knew that this situation needed to be handled by people more qualified than me. Andrew and I agree that Andrew should be the one to call 911 so we don't risk breaking whatever trust Connor has with us. Andrew called 911 from his workplace and then Connor told me he was gonna take a nap. Andrew calls me back and says that the police told him that they'd received an earlier call and that officers were on the scene. I'm like, I'm here right now. I'm at the apartment. Nobody is here. Andrew calls 911 back and tells them that nobody's here and they told him that they were dispatching officers. I wait 20 more minutes. Nobody's come. So I call Andrew and ask him to call again. Andrew calls him again and then calls me and tells me that they told him that the person inside the apartment has to call. So I run to the gate by the guest parking lot and call the police. The dispatcher, officer number two, says she'll be sending the first available agent. I told officer number two the situation. I call Andrew back. I wait another half half hour and nobody's come. I call officer number two and ask if there's any way I can be called when there are agents on the way. Officer number two says that she doesn't know which agent it will be so she can't tell them to call me. I'm like, so I just sit here and wait? And officer number two says, yes, I've put in the report. The first available agent will be dispatched. Don't understand why mental health cases are so low priority. I called her back a second time and I stressed the urgency of the situation. I text Andrew super frustrated. Then I went to go charge my phone in the car. As I'm sitting in my car, officer number one, the same officer who called Connor while I was at the apartment, calls me and says, are you the one who called about the social media guy? And I said, I am at the apartment complex right now. He could drive under the influence at any time. You need to come here immediately. I can let you in. Officer number one just says, interesting. Okay, we'll dispatch officers. I called Andrew and explained that officer number one isn't taking it seriously at all and I don't think he's sending anyone. Andrew tells me to wait just a little while longer and then I should leave and we can figure out what to do next. I wait 15 more minutes and to my surprise, a new number calls me and we'll call this woman officer number three. I did try to screen record this call, but it has no audio. As you can see, there is no audio on this call, but I did try to screen record the call. Officer number three actually works with mental health services, which is why the number that called me was not 911, and she tells me that they can't do anything. I'm like, what do you mean? He's a danger to others if he drives. And she said that unless he's not actively harming himself or others, they can't come and voluntarily commit him. I said that he has pounds of ayahuasca in his apartment, which I recorded footage of, and she said that that's a police matter, not mental health services. I explained that he had posted all of his personal information online, and she said that that's not a crime. She also said that when the officer called him earlier, he answered questions correctly. I guess those questions were, are you going to hurt yourself or others? Which Connor said no to. I said, what if he crashes his car while he's high? And officer number three said, we can't go off a what if situation. I asked her if she could do anything. She said she couldn't, but she encouraged me to go back and talk to him and try to convince him to stop doing the drugs. I told her that I wanted it to go on record that I had tried to help him. And she said that a formal complaint had been filed. I hung up and I was feeling pretty helpless. But then I remembered that a mental health professional had reached out to me over Instagram. The counselor said he didn't live far from the complex and he could come over and start working with Connor. I called Andrew and he encouraged me to bring the counselor to Connor's apartment, so I messaged the counselor back and we coordinated where we were going to meet. I brought the counselor to Connor's house and we spent another few hours with him, but the counselor could not have him committed because Connor is not legally his client. I left when the counselor did. I posted the statement to my Instagram story and stopped responding to Connor's text. That night, Connor posted his apartment address, his phone number, and started giving away the rest of his money via PayPal, Dogecoin, and Cash App. The next day, May 6, two of Connor's followers contact me and say they're going to be driving down from up north to see if they can help him. Their names are Micah and Dylan, and they told Connor they were going to be filming a documentary about him. Micah and Dylan start cleaning Connor's apartment and actually get him to go to the gym. That night, they decide they're gonna stay with their friends until next week, and I say I can come over tomorrow and help them clean. I stayed up all night talking to them because Connor's posts were still very erratic, and he ended up doxing another influencer's phone number. I start doing research into ayahuasca addiction, but there's hardly any information because nobody uses it like that, taking it so often. 
It's such a powerful psychedelic that most people do it once in their lifetime. However, I did read this, which seems applicable to this situation. The actual DMT itself isn't currently known to have a potential for physical addiction or dependence, but what can happen is a psychological craving. People often become psychologically addicted to the experience of using a drug like DMT or drinking ayahuasca tea. They may want to continue recreating the feelings and experiences they had while taking the substance, which can lead them to use it continuously. Also, under these definitions, I have witnessed Connor experience delusions and disorganized speech. Micah and Dylan are going to be releasing their documentary, which I will link in the description when it's uploaded. But what happened next is that they spent two days at Connor's apartment cleaning and trying to get him to buy furniture, stuff like that. We've got a bunch of groceries. Um, everything over here is getting clean. We finally got the sink clean. Um, Connor's behavior was escalating by the day and I was advised by the mental health professional not to return to Connor's apartment. Thursday, May 6th, the counselor returned to Connor's house to continue to try to get through to him. On Friday morning, May 7th, Micah told me that Connor wanted to fake his death and crash his Porsche. Friday night, Micah messaged me and told me that Connor had gotten aggressive with him and Dylan and they no longer felt it was safe to be at Connor's house. Day after that, Saturday, May 8th, Connor threatened to kill himself on a live stream. He also favored a comment saying that he was going to commit suicide. The counselor called 911 and the police went to Connor's apartment, but Connor had left and rode his bike to the park. The counselor went to the park, but could not find Connor. The counselor was keeping me, Dylan, and Micah updated in a group chat. We were concerned that Connor would not be able to find his way home. However, Connor did eventually return to his apartment and the police were waiting for him there. As Connor recorded and posted on Instagram, the police let him go. At this point, because Connor had posted his phone number and his home address, I felt that I needed to warn people that it was unsafe to go to his home and that contacting him was feeding into his mania. My friend gave me her old Instagram account to use so that I wouldn't trigger Connor with my name on my profile because like the counselor had said, I was becoming a symbol in his mind and he thought that we were engaged. I copied and pasted this message on all of Connor's Instagram posts to warn people that the situation had become dangerous after he had gotten aggressive with Micah and Dylan and had threatened to harm himself. People started asking me questions, so I asked them to DM me so I could explain the situation without posting it publicly on Connor's profile. People might say, but you said you were handling everything offline. I meant that I publicly wasn't giving real-time updates because Connor could get tipped off on all that we were doing to help him, and like I said, posting about him only exacerbated his mania. I felt an obligation to at least warn people because the situation had gotten dangerous and people were talking about going to Connor's house. Even while I was updating people, they would pick apart my story because I didn't yet have all the information I was confused and or I was still trying to process everything that was happening in real time. Sunday, May 9th, Connor started posting his family's phone numbers, him saying the n-word, and started making references to child pornography, which I will be abbreviating to CP. Once again, the police visited Connor's apartment about the CP and then let him go as Connor recorded and posted on his Instagram. That night, an influencer offers to fly Connor out to stay with him and everyone is encouraging Connor to go. I DM the influencer's Instagram, explain the situation, and tell him that it might not be safe because Connor got aggressive with Micah and Dylan. I also tell the influencer that the counselor is visiting Connor almost every day and I don't know if he should leave his supervision because the counselor was able to get Connor to throw out some of the ayahuasca that night. The influencer agrees and says that he'll leave it in our hands. Monday, May 10th, the counselor left Connor's apartment at around 1 or 2 a.m. after spending time with him, making sure he was drinking water and getting him to throw out some of the drugs. He did mention that Connor was with a girl he had met on 6th Street, but he thought that she wasn't in any danger. At around 2 p.m., I checked Connor's Instagram and his last post was him driving around in his car that morning. When I checked, it had been about two hours since he'd last posted. I started to get really worried that he might be hurt or lost. I asked Dylan and Micah if they knew anything because Connor had shared his live location with Dylan, but Dylan said that it had stopped working. I checked this app called Citizen, which reports on local crime in the area, and commented on every car accident asking people to please post a picture or let me know if one of the vehicles involved was a silver port. Portia. I texted the counselor, but he wasn't responding. When we finally called later that night, he told me that he'd slept all day because he'd been up all night worrying about Connor. It had now been around three hours since Connor had last posted to his Instagram, which was very unusual because he normally uploaded like every 15 minutes. Then Dylan tries texting Connor and it doesn't go through. I called the police who referred me to public information services who said that they would get back to me in about 48 hours about who was involved with each car accident. So I got in my car and I drove to every car accident reported on Citizen. I'm doing a U-turn so that I can see if it's him. I couldn't tell from this side of the road. It's on this side and I was coming from this direction. Okay. I think it's just that car. Okay. 
Okay, it's not Connor's car. Please God, please don't let it be him. Please God, please don't let it be him. Please God, please don't let it be him. Where the fuck is he? It was rush hour. There was a lot of traffic, so it was hard for me to get anywhere. I drive around for two hours before I text Micah and Dylan that I can't find Connor, and they suggest that I go to his house just to see if his car was there. I had not been back to Connor's apartment since he became aggressive with Micah and Dylan, but I decided I could just see if his car is there. I told Micah and Dylan to start calling all the hospitals and police to see if they could find him. I drove to the complex and I saw that Connor's car was not there. Connor's car isn't here. I called Dylan so that I could be on the phone with him while I knocked on the door. One of Connor's friends opened the door and we'll call him John. He was also there with the same girl from the night before who we'll call Teresa. Teresa told me that Connor had met her two days ago on 6th Street and had invited her to come over last night. She arrived while the counselor was still there and after the counselor left, Teresa decided to stay the night to keep an eye on Connor. I fully believe her when she told me that they did not have sex and Teresa also has a boyfriend who I later met. Connor posted that Teresa's name is Wanda and that she's a 15 year old prostitute. That is not her real name and she is 19. He posted about you and everyone thinks you're a 15 year old prostitute, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, no, I am 19. He did not rape her or any of the shit that he said. Teresa told me that after the counselor left, Teresa went to bed and when she woke up, she saw that Connor had been on a bender and was in a really bad state. Teresa woke up after Connor had already been driving around, which was when he posted the last post to his Instagram. John had driven to Connor's house to see Connor and arrived at the apartment after Connor had already been driving around that morning. Teresa told me that Connor's dad had called him and asked him to go to a specific psychiatric mental hospital and that his dad would be flying down the next day. Connor wiped his phone, gave his phone and his credit cards to his friends, and then left in his car, and he did not have the ayahuasca either. He doesn't have the ayahuasca. He doesn't have the ayahuasca. He doesn't have any, like, he doesn't have any illegal substances on him Okay. at this moment, as far as I'm aware. Teresa was on the phone with her boyfriend when apparently Connor told John that he was going to the beach and left without her knowing. I don't think that John understood the situation and did not know that Connor should not be driving. The last thing he said to you was, like, he's going to the beach, right? Yeah, it's him. Yeah, he's been ordering new phones, apparently. So he's with his car somewhere, but we don't know where because he doesn't have his phone. Connor had been gone for about five or six hours when I arrived at the apartment. Teresa and John explained the situation to me, and then we kept trying to get into Connor's phone and computer in order to contact his parents. But Connor had smashed his computer before he'd left as well. I'm like trying to restart his computer. Why call the cops? because he's in a drug-induced psychosis. Yeah, he should not be he driving. Turn violent at any moment. And he did. Also, like, we were not able to call the police on him because he wasn't actively harming himself or someone else, but they said if we, he was actively driving, we were able, we would be able to call the police. He's actively driving. Exactly. Dude, he really fucked up this computer. Then I drove Teresa to her house so she could get ready for her work shift. I also met her boyfriend who is aware of the situation. We discovered that although Connor had locked us out of his Apple ID, calls were still coming through to his phone. Andrew called Connor's phone. We updated him and then Connor called his own phone and told us that he was being held hostage an hour away. Hello? <laughs> Hello? Who is it? Uh, this is... Who is this? This is Mr. Connor. <laughs> so, essentially, um, can you please write this down or report this or something? Yeah. Okay, because this is very interesting. I need you to go to the police immediately because when I tried to go to the psych ward, there was a man, his name was... And he's working for the fucking government. He is with Jake Paul and H3. He fucking is holding me hostage. So sorry, you got this. Yeah, you texted it to me. I'm screenshotting it. He also texted Teresa's phone the address. How he remembered her number, we have no idea. Teresa and I went to the police station and it was closed. We are currently at the police department. There is no one here. He says he's being held hostage. Like what it sounded like is that he went to the psych ward and then someone took him, but it's not clear. So we called Austin police who redirected us to the police of the other county that Connor claimed that he was in. We told them the situation and then the other county police called the number that Connor had used to call us. The police called us back and explained that the phone belonged to a college student in another county, a third county, and they were handing off the case to that county's police. I called the third county's police and they had no record of any case being referred to them. We filled them in on the situation as well. They told me they would look for him, but nobody ever called to update me or follow up. We wanted to call Connor's dad, but we couldn't get into his phone. Connor had posted his dad's phone number before, but I couldn't find it. I guess that the post had been taken down by Instagram guidelines. It was getting dark. I'd been driving around all day. 
I left Teresa's house, went home and posted the update to Connor's Instagram. I also DM'd the situation to his sister who told me something different than what Teresa had said his dad had said. I reached out to Teresa. She confirmed that that is what his dad said. And as you heard, that is what Connor said in the video when he called us. At midnight that night, Teresa called me to let me know that she and her boyfriend had managed to access Connor's phone and were able to call his mom. Connor's mom would also be flying in the next day and would pick up Connor's phone from Teresa's house. Teresa called me back the next day, May 11th, and told me that Connor's mom had come and gotten his phone. Connor's sister later posted on her Instagram that they have him in an institution. That's all I know. This is now being handled by his family, so as I said on Instagram, I'm taking a step back. So if Connor does start posting again or whatever, I do not want to be involved. Now I'm going to be addressing the questions that people have asked me since Connor posted me to his social media. Where is his family? I've been told that they're here now. I don't know Connor's situation with his family. I don't know his relationship to them, and it's none of my business. All I know is that they weren't here, but they apparently are now. Of course, why don't we take the drugs or his phone? We were advised by the mental health professional not to take his phone or the drugs or else he would funnel his mania into something else which would possibly be violent. The counselor's strategy was convincing Connor to slowly get off the drugs and make the decision to quit for himself, which was somewhat successful because the counselor was able to take the drugs and throw away some of it the night before Connor went missing. Additionally, like I said earlier, while I was at Connor's house, I unboxed some more bags of ayahuasca while I was opening up packages. Why don't we take his car keys and hide his car? we would be liable for auto theft. Why did the police let him go? Like I said earlier, Connor puts on a very manic persona for social media, but he is very calm in person, which is why I assume the police let him go. And from the times that I called them, it seemed that they could not take action unless he was actively hurting himself or others. They also could not enter his apartment without seeing the drugs, and Connor talked to them outside of his front door, so I guess the officers didn't see the ayahuasca when they visited him. Why didn't I tie him down to his bed and get him sober? His bed is a mattress on the floor. There's nowhere to tie him to. He's also a 6'4", former bodybuilder, and I'm a 5'1", white girl. Connor isn't an animal. He's someone who needs help, and he already did one stint in a mental hospital, which, as his sister put it, only made him worse. Will we get in legal trouble for trying to help him and failing? No. I think it's pretty clear that we did everything we could, and we were under no legal obligation to help him in the first place. Were any of the people involved drunk or on drugs? I never witnessed anyone else doing drugs, and as I've said multiple times, I am a sober person. Why didn't I upload this video sooner? The reason it took me so long to upload this video is because the situation was still developing. I went to Connor's apartment for the first time 10 days ago. I had trouble deciding whether or not to make this video at all. I feel the need to explain what I went through because I was personally involved in this situation and I witnessed the failure of the police and the mental health service systems firsthand. I couldn't just come back to YouTube and tie balloons to my hair or make a googly eye bikini and pretend like nothing happened. This was an especially difficult situation because Connor has over 450,000 followers on his Instagram, so his psychosis and self-doxing were made very public. I'm not educated on this subject, so if you have any ideas on how that could be prevented in the future, be sure to comment it. I tried to address as much as I could in this video without sharing too much personal information about Connor. I want to respond to some of the comments that have been posted or messaged to me. It's not a joke. It's not fake. He's not acting. He's not just going crazy. His behavior is the result of drugs. I don't care about followers. I care about keeping Connor alive. Some influencer girl baited him into shouting her out and this is what taking advantage of him looks like. I did not use Connor. I did not post on his social media accounts or ask him to shout me out. I did not take his money, his Bitcoin, or any of the stuff at his house. The only thing he gave me was this ring, which I hope to give back to him when he's sober. Connor did not pay me anything, and Dylan, Micah, the counselor, and everyone else involved did so for free as well. I did not have sex with Connor. That never happened, and he never once made sexual advances towards me. I'm not mad about us not having sex either. I no longer can devote this much of my time to helping Connor. I tried everything I could think of to help him, and I've left it in his family's hands. Maybe I didn't do enough, but I need to step away because I don't know him, and I don't want to make anything worse. As I am one of the only ones here physically, I hope I explained why we were not able to take away his phone, his car, or even the drugs that are doing this to him. Now that I'm posting this, I am removing myself 
from the situation. I hope he can get some income back from the AdSense of the videos I got him to on private. I hope his treatment is successful. This has been a draining week on top of all of this. On May 6th, someone I knew from middle and high school passed away, so I was trying to deal with that in addition to communicating with Micah and Dylan. My car was also hit by a drunk driver, so I was filing an insurance claim in between helping Connor and urging people to not go to his house. I felt like I needed to work on this video nonstop and get it up as soon as possible before I could post anything on social media or I'd have everyone asking me about Connor and yelling at me for not doing something. So I'm sorry if this video is not perfect. Please stop contacting Connor and do not go to his apartment. Please stop making fun of him and taking advantage of him. And to the people who still accuse me of clout fishing by uploading this video, I will not be dragging the situation out any further. My involvement ends here. And if anyone asks me about Connor, I'm just going to send them this video and hope the best for him. I'm out.